Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. We have a pretty busy day today. You know we're gonna have snake eggs. We've got all kinds of work to do. I have to just start my day spending a little time with my girl Perdita here because she is absolutely wonderful. And I tell you, she is missing people. Uh, she needs to be handled a lot more, that's for sure. She is usually spoiled every single day and uh, she's definitely not getting the attention she's used to. So uh, hopefully with any luck, we'll be open soon enough and uh, we'll talk about that maybe in the next day or two because I have some ideas on that. But for now, I'm just gonna spend a little time with my girl and then get my day started. Remember the other day we had that spotted python that laid the eggs where there was a couple see-through ones? This one's a little see-through, but look at this one right here. It's still doing okay, and you can start to see the snake actually coiled in there. You can see the coils of the snake. Now, again, I don't know if this is gonna make it or not. I have no idea, but the black dot is its eye and its head, and then its body comes around and swirls, and that's its tail right there. I have never seen this in all the years that I've been doing doing snake breeding. So I hope this egg makes it because it's absolutely going to be incredible to see it develop. But again, I don't have high hopes because again, you know, obviously something wasn't right why it didn't calcify. Now this egg here, you can't see the coil, but this one looks like it's going to go full term because it's mainly calcified, but you can still see through it a little bit. So I have a feeling we're going to at least get a glimpse into it, but to watch the development of a snake in an egg like this would be absolutely incredible if it stays. So I'll keep you guys updated so far. It's been incredible. This is a pretty nice clutch right here. It looks like a big clutch of eggs. I always love when females are kind of piled onto where they can't even keep the eggs in. There's so many eggs. So I'm assuming this is going to be a pretty good clutch. And the male I bred her to was this little stud right here who is actually a banana fire spider. So we could get, you know, banana fire spinner blast. We can get a whole bunch of combinations thereof. But uh, he's not a big guy, probably only 550 grams. First time breeder. This is his first clutch and it looks like it's pretty fertile. Let's see how many eggs it has. Like I said, this looks like a huge clutch. Holy moly. Can you believe that? What in the world? I tell you what, that looks more like a Burmese python clutch than a ball python clutch. I mean, my gosh, that is a huge clutch of eggs. Mama, you did so good. I mean, look at her. She definitely looks deflated. We'll get her cleaned up. We'll get her kind of washed up and stuff like that. Get her ready. Hopefully she'll take a rat this week because I tell you what, that looks beat up. Some females put so much energy into production. That's why they have this many eggs. Other females don't have that many eggs eggs and they don't even look like they've laid after they laid but wow this girl uh yeah it looks like she laid a lot and she did two four six eight 10, 11 eggs. <laughs> All right, 12 eggs was the record for this year so far. I think last year we had one clutch of 13 eggs, but 11 eggs, that is ridiculous. Ivy is such a trip. You know, of course, I'm filling up the water right here, and you can see the water pressure going, and we've seen her go underneath her waterfall, like with her head, like she seems to enjoy it, and she's just sitting there. I swear to gosh, that's like a snake massage. Not like the sense like our snake massage, but the fact that the water is massaging her. Again, I've never seen a snake do the things that Ivy does. Uh, she, she's just nuts. Time for my daily checkup when it comes to Nova and Lilith to see if there's any eggs. I see both of them high up. Nova is kind of hanging out over here protecting. Lilith definitely looks like she's still got some marbles. I don't see any excavating in the nest box. So another day with no frilly eggs. I'm telling you guys, any day we're gonna have eggs. I cannot wait, but uh, still on egg watch with the frillies. I've really been working on this with Speedy. Speedy, go this way. Hey, Speedy, that way, that way. Come on, go this way. Speedy, go this way. Speedy, go this way. Go, go this way, come on. Turn around, let's go. Let's go, turn. Speedy, go that way. Go that way. Speedy, go that way. Come on, let's go. This way, Speedy, go around. Go this way. Come on, this way. Let's go. All the way around, let's go. Let's go. Walk that way. All right, get going, keep going. Keep going. Get going. Thank you, Speedy, keep going. Get out of here now. 
<laughs> been working on that training i mean where he just follows your hand and he literally just turns around and walks the other way so i don't know behavior of reptiles is awesome and uh, speedy's been a little special project for me and i think it's working out pretty well guess what time it is Colubrid egg time. All right, this one is a banger of a clutch. I am super excited about this. This is a tessera corn that's het for scaleless. So the tessera is that cool kind of stripey pattern. I'll show you in a second. And it's bred to a motley scaleless. Wow, this male has been good. He's fathered a couple other clutches. They've been really fertile. So fingers crossed there's some fertile eggs in here because this is going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. And you can see that's the tessera. Almost looks like a garter snake type of pattern with those red racing stripes and look at she's actually tied right through the eggs right here so somehow I've got to get her to get out because she's right through the center of this egg so I can't get the eggs unless she moves come on little monkey and look at that clutch right there come on you're you're keeping the eggs from me baby okay I can just get around like this there we go whoop 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 there we go. Looks like, wow, that's a beautiful clutch. But look at how incredibly gorgeous that snake is. And again, we can get scaleless tesseras. We can potentially get motley scaleless tesseras if she's het for motley, which I'm not sure if she is or not. But a lot of corn snakes have all kinds of hidden genetics. Regardless, gonna be some crazy stuff. Does look like we've got two little sluggers, little outliers here. I'll get rid of this one here and this little monkey right here. But the rest of them look amazing. Look at that. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 good eggs. Wow, that was amazing. I was waiting for that clutch. I'm super excited. Next up is one of those Abbott's Okatees. Again, just a really good classic corn snake that is an Okatee with beautiful patterns. And again, a nice clutch. Beautiful snake. Ouch, come on, mom, I'm sorry. She's just being protective. You're okay, mama. We'll get you all cleaned up. We'll get you some water and she'll be happy by tomorrow. And look at another really beautiful clutch. Wow, it's a good day for eggs. There's no doubt about that. Let's go ahead, just pop these over here. We've got two four, six, eight, nine. Again, this is just Abbott's Okatee to Abbott's Okatee, so there'll be nothing but Abbott's Okatees, no mutations or anything like that. So those are gonna be some beautiful babies. Gloves, where we're going, we don't need gloves. One really thing I wanted to actually hit up with you guys is why I don't wear gloves. Um, 100%, I get it. It's, it's a safety reason why a lot of people use them and you don't wanna get scratched up. However, for me, it's an actual feeling that I get in my hands when I'm touching animals. So let's go ahead and show you. It's really almost sort of this self-awareness that I have with this animal. Where you see my hands are placed here, it's on the chest and on the base of his tail. And these are areas where on their body, it's going to flex, it's going to constrict. And especially when he's upset, any snake, any lizard, any kind, you'll feel it right, right there, especially where my thumb is right here. I can feel it right now where his shoulder's tensing up. He's ready, he, like right now, he's just, he's just telling me to back off. But eventually, once I feel the muscles start to loosen a little bit, I know he's about to fling off me. He's gonna try to jump off of me. That little bit of material between my fingers and this animal right here, not only in a weird way, it makes me feel like I'm not as connected with them, but it also in the other way, it, it keeps me from being able to feel certain things little warning and triggers that I might feel in their body that's a little bit more beyond than, than just hissing and flicking their tongue at me I've mentioned this so many times over the last two and a half years I have changed my opinion on the intelligence and what reptiles can do no animal has proved me wrong more than ivy for sure but I just believe that these animals can do a lot more than we think and we've been working so hard on so much training with them and it's been unbelievable again you saw what happened with speedy we have all the monitors the rhino iguanas even working on the snakes with night fury now with ball training so my point is is that I really am inspired to take this to the next level I honestly believe that we can train a lot of these reptiles to do things as much as you see training with a lot of different animals so along with the crew we're gonna work really hard to see how far we can push the envelope of training if you guys have any ideas down in the comments let us know what can we do with Elvis we know that he's ball trained and we can get him to do almost anything what else can we get him to do what can we get Diddy and Dixie what can we actually start to work with with snakes and see if we can train them. I just believe that we're just starting to touch the surface because to be honest with you, eight or 10 years ago, it was unheard of to even do target training for the most part. Now it's become a relatively common thing in most zoos. So what will eight or 10 years from now be? And I hope that maybe we can be some of the people that set the trend. So we're gonna work really hard at some new initiatives with training these guys, all of our reptiles. Uh, I'd like to hear what you think about that. And I'd like to hear if you have any ideas down in the comments. Of course, I've got to work with my girl salt a lot during this period of time because remember you know when we were open you know probably a hundred people a week would actually handle salt and uh, now it's just kind of me and the crew you know so she's obviously not being handled as much and it's so important to keep her mellow it's okay girl it's all right calm down 
And again, you can see I'm not restraining her at all. I'm just letting her go. Stay calm, girl. And we just have to get her to the point. But you know, during the virtual tours and stuff like that, sometimes I'll just pet her on the head. I mean, I can touch her mouth. She doesn't snap, anything like that. So she's staying and remaining super calm, but I can't wait till we get back open up. Because again, plans are for this animal when it's eight or 10 foot, is for people to be able to interact with her. So in order to have that happen, we have to keep her calm. So with any luck, hopefully we'll be open relatively soon, even if it's limited numbers of people, so that people can start handling animals like salt, so we can keep keeping her socialized. Oh, calm down. Calm. Calm. Again, just got to keep working with her. She uh, She's definitely a little more challenging than she used to be, but she's still an absolutely wonderful animal. Actually, this girl is the first albino Nelson's milk snake to lay for the year. She's not a big girl at all, and uh, I hope that they'll be nice and fertile. I'm not expecting a lot of eggs, but still, I love albino Nelson's. The first ones I ever bought, I paid two thousand dollars from a guy named Doug Moody that produced the very first ones and oh my gosh that's a much larger clutch there's a couple infer legs in here but I cannot believe she laid that many I thought there might be you know maybe three four at the most but I tell you what this is actually a pretty good clutch right here we got two four six seven over here in a couple slugs so seven good eggs two slugs that's amazing and again you know back then a couple grand for a snake that beautiful was seemed like a bargain now they're all like a hundred bucks so I mean they're really a pet trade available animal and I think they are absolutely gorgeous. And last clue clutch for the day is actually an albino cow king that's bred to a lavender snow. But the albino is that for chocolate which would make the lavender snow. So let's see what she's got. Oh yeah it looks like a really good clutch of eggs. I just love a normal albino cow king. I mean look at how beautiful that snake is right there. You can go back in mama. You did a good job. We'll get her cleaned up, get her water as always uh, and let's see how many eggs she has. Again what we have that could hatch out of this is albinos, lavenders, lavender snows, snows, stuff like that. Two, four, five, eight eggs for a cow king. Cow kings lay smaller clutches. I'm completely fine with that. Should be some cool stuff and with any luck we'll get that solid purple lavender snow. So we've got a baby crusty today and I'm going to show you guys how we set them up as babies at least. It's about the same as an adult. It's just on a smaller scale. So we're gonna use paper towel as our substrate right there in the bottom. I've got a little hide here. It's just a little styrofoam hide just so they can go under it and a little piece of foliage. Just another thing they can hide or climb on. Then we make sure we missed it down and we missed once a day, but you're if you have a baby at your house, you're gonna wanna kind of pay attention to when the cage dries out and missed it whenever it dries out. The last things we're gonna add is one cup for water and a little cup for food. And these guys are so tiny, they barely, barely eat. I like to use um, just like a little water bottle cap or a pop cap or something. That way you can kind of tell if they're actually eating or not. Another way you can tell that they're eating is if you'll see like little poops and stuff in there. They're so tiny um, when they're babies, like they barely eat. So we'll put that right in there, fill up the water, and then it's ready. And we can let the little baby go. There you go. And there we go. That's how you set up a baby crested gecko or even an adult. You just got to do it on a larger scale. If you like this video, can you do me a favor and hit this playlist over here? It's me playing with giant snakes. I know you guys always like that, right? Up here, you can actually support my podcast channel called Checking In. That would mean the world to me. On this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel and turn the post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.